pandemic has continued to ravage societies across the world, with new strains being discovered. The death toll still on the rise locally and globally. In the first phase, the complacency about the disease was a bit overwhelming. However, the second phase is stormed with more fears above myths and misconceptions. Locally, the disease burden is growing sadly each day as the, as the death toll continued to rise with more positive cases being reported as well. Enough about the fears. Let's talk about hope and survival. Wow. We are all used to have Nyari as the host, but today I'm privileged to have you as our guest talking about a journey from testing positive and um, up to date. Nyari, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. Thank you, Bola, for having me on the show today and for dethroning me and putting me here. I love it. I love it. And I'm privileged as Baldwin Maposa, your host today, to be on board. And you're looking smart. Oh, you're like one person. Interesting. <laughs> Fortunately, I, I'm taken to those My ladies are serving. But anyway, okay. Nyari, can you tell us briefly um, what the virus, what COVID-19 meant before you, you, you tested positive? Oh, well, that's, that's quite, an, quite a question, hey? Right? Um, so for me, COVID-19, um, before I tested uh, positive, is really something I took seriously. Um, I think I am unpopular with um, people who don't like to wear masks. So I would always like to wear masks. I always ask other people to wear masks. I tried to sanitize as much as I could. And um, I really was acknowledging and conversant of the fact that it was killing people and it's still killing people today. Um, and I try to protect myself and those that I care about. Yeah, so I think I've always also been that person who has been buttressing the need for people to be, um, to be taking serious COVID lockdowns as much as you can, stay at home, and also, of course, I'm aware of the fact that it's not everybody who can practically stay at home because people need to eat and all this, but I've always been pushing that. Let's obey what the government is saying, what WHO is saying, what World Health Organization is saying. Let's, tr let's take precaution. I'm also always been the person who, when I go to a restaurant, I would actually sometimes become unpopular uh, with waitresses or waiters who would not properly wear their mask because then there's always that person who brings your food and then their mask is below even their mouth, in between their mouth and they're talking to you, they're like, you know, you can actually, you know, you know, they could spit into your food. So I've always said, can you please wear your mask properly? Can you please come and sanitize the area that I am? So I've always been very cautious and acknowledging of the fact that we need to, to, to take precaution. Right. Um, I, I, I like it when you were talking about how cautious and always uh, alert you stayed in the, in the course of your, of your life. But let me get personal with you uh, from the day you felt sick uh, into the day you actually go and get tested. Take us through. How did you, how did it start? So, um, the, the, it's a very interesting uh, time because I, I think in hindsight, a couple of things make sense because I think I'd, I just had a, I think I started off with a, with a annoying headache the previous day. And then um, I think I kind of felt I was getting fluish. Then the next day I got up and the whole body was just in pain. Um, anything that could get aching was aching that day. And um, I was on a work assignment. I requested a colleague to take me home immediately. And so we drove from um, wherever we were and we passed through the city. And I bought some flu meds and some coffee mall as well as uh, some cough mixtures. And um, and then I came home, I started taking the course. And then I felt like it was getting, it wasn't getting better. But at that point, so did I it. Yeah. You never thought of uh, either consulting any physician, any medical practitioner? Why? Because COVID in that moment was the last of my suspicions. It just, I just black out. 
I just blacked out. I I don't know whether it was denial or whatever it was, but I it, COVID was the last thing, and it was also the the time when uh, the government had kind of relaxed uh, the um, the the lockdowns. So I guess with relaxation also comes that. But I oh, I was always conscious uh, in in my personal space. But to think that in my how careful I, I had tried to be, I would be a candidate for testing positive to COVID-19, it didn't occur the first time. So I came home, I took medicines, and um, I think I went for, a, for a, about five, six days. My medicines ran out. When the time, when my medicines ran out, I, I think by that time I'd knocked off like two or three cough mix, uh, cough mixtures, the likes of woods and another two types. That was, that was after, I mean, I mean days. About, about a week, I was getting into a week. Then when the, when my cough mix mixtures ran out, then I was like, wait a minute. Usually when I have a cold and a flu meal and anything else, I heal within three four days. My flu has to be going. Now when my when my my cough uh, syrups you know finished. Actually, that's when I thought like there was even a further heaviness. I was, and I think in that moment I was beginning to deteriorate, like my chest was heavier. I was now beginning to cough, dry cough, and I'm like, I've been drinking this. I felt like, okay, it was getting a little bit wet, but it's not really wet. What is going on? And then I was also getting worse physically, because even when I started getting uh, the, the cold, I was sick. You know, moderate to high sick, but I wasn't that high. But when this happened, I was now getting worse. I was like, no. They, they. So I told my my niece that, no, 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 this is not COVID. She's like, no, you, uh, you see COVID? I'm like, no, no, no. But we'd always been also careful, you know, in how we, we stay together. Stayed with my niece, and so we try to be as cautious and careful with, in everything. Um, even in the home before we even had COVID, we just always tried to be very cautious. When we came out from the, you know, when we went out, we came back, we always try to do as much as we can to be cautious, change the clothes, wash the face, wash the hands. So yeah, that's kind of, then when I got worse, that's when I, a friend of mine said, I beg you go and get tested, go and see a doctor. Sorry to, sorry to cut you. Yeah, yeah. A friend of yours begged you which means you personally, you're not willing, you're not willing. But uh, uh, growing up and even research points out is women having a more health processing behavior as compared to, to males. Why you? The fact that I have an immune system that accepted medication and I responded well to this is because I live a healthy lifestyle. I, go, I work out a lot. I eat right most of the time. Um, so I'm a, a healthy seeking person, but I just don't go to the doctors. My The doctors, I don't know the last time, oh, I went to the doctor because of COVID. But before COVID, I think I had not been to the doctor for years. I mean, of course, to the detriment that sometimes I pack things that I'm supposed to go and see the doctor about. I, I don't usually, because I grew up, not I'm not affording doctors. So, it is a tall order for me to just think about doctors, and I think the the feeling that women go to the doctors more than men, I don't think it's really true. Uh, maybe what then causes more women to go to the hospital is if a lot of women get pregnant, you can't deal with pregnancy than to go to the hospital. But women being women, I mean, let's face it, varume vatogara magwara when it comes to you know, when it comes to sickness. <laughs> when a man falls sick because the normal flu, Muruma no rara bautonga kufa, ne flu. And yet women just keep going, keep rolling. So I think we must separate issues. Yeah? Okay. But I don't want to get into that conversation. Okay. That's not why I'm here today. Okay, <laughs> okay. It's, it, it always comes back to you. Yes. And I like you are getting deep, as we are getting personal. Yeah. But just hold on a moment yeah. as we are taking a break. Dear viewers, we'll be back in a moment. Uh, for me, I think the first thing that I realized is that I I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat for about 
four straight days I tried eating. There's a day I even tried to eat two slices of bread. And I took about 30 minutes trying to eat that. I had a break in between and still I couldn't finish the food. And slowly my body started getting feverish. And I was feeling tired. And there's one day that I then went back home. I just parked the car and I started coughing. And the cough was profuse. It was strong. It was bad. And I just told myself that I think I should start isolate, isolating and get tested the next day. I went to get tested. Unfortunately, the result first came out negative. Mm. And... I got stressed because I didn't know what to do because my symptoms were getting worse and I was losing power day by day and the cough was getting a little bit bad and I could feel my chest, it was painful. And I got tested for typhoid, I got tested for malaria and then the doctor then decided, ah oh, no, please don't get tested again, I got tested. And on the 25th of December, I found out that I was actually COVID-19 positive. Hello and welcome back. And Nyari, you were telling us how you were convinced by your friend uh -huh. to go and get tested for COVID-19. Take us through the day you actually packed your bag uh, uh -huh. and off you went to the, to the doctor. To the doctor. Um, so yeah, in that moment, I also knew that I was now COVID-19 positive. And you knew uh, how? I, I mean, the chest will tell you, COVID-19, if it's in your body, um, I always feel like it will tell you. In, for mine, it told me, because I've been read, I've been also visiting and following some conversations, and there's a doctor, I think it's Dr. Stone, who has been, who's created this, you know, these periods where, I think she says, from the time you get the first infection to the, what if, I think, fourth or fifth day, when you then I think the 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 the, the initial uh, symptoms come out, she says seek medication there because when you wait from day five to day ten, that is where it gets complicated. So I think I had entered day seven or day eight or nine um, without seeking you know treatment. So I was beginning to deteriorate, and I think if I spent another day or two, I the, she explained that when you enter the that phase into the third, this is where you, no matter what you do, you will not heal because I think the, the coronavirus would have taken over a lot of your, you know, the, the 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 breathing organs that you are beyond help. Like even the oxygen or ventilator and whatever cannot save you. So I, I think I was now almost entering that zone, but I was not quite there. So I knew that my chest, whatever was happening, was foreign. I'd never suffered flu like that. So I, I, I decided to go, I invited a neighbor, um, they took me to the doctor, sat in the back, I was always cautious, I, I, they took me to the doctor, and then when I got to the doctor, I told them that the doctor had got COVID, but I'm not yet tested, but treat me like a COVID patient so that he did not get COVID from me. Um, and then we spoke and then he immediately put me on strong antibiotics, medications and whatnot. That's the day I tested. And then the next day I called the, the lab and then they told me that I was positive. I, yeah, that's how it happened. Uh, for me, I think one of the greatest stresses was when I was sick, I didn't know what, what it was. And I was trying to define what it is and I just couldn't. Because the first test came out negative. I got tested for malaria, came out negative. I got tested for typhoid, came out negative. So for me, when the test came out positive, I was actually very relieved because now you're fighting a battle that you know, not a battle that you don't know. I remember when I tested positive, I, I live with my mom. Uh, my mom had gone to Botswana because my dad also had tested positive for, for COVID. So I was alone, but I remember 
I got support from, from my family. My, my uncle who, who was going with me to the, who was going with me to the doctors. Uh, I went there with him through, throughout the tests. He was with me, he was my support. And I have my other uncles and my aunts and Atete. They would bring food to me for a week and a half every single day. They would bring food because I didn't have power to cook. I didn't have power to clean. And every day they'll bring food. Obviously, we social distance. They'll bring the food by the door. They'll call me that, Trevor, the food is there. Please come out. And to be honest, friends, family were calling. I couldn't talk for most of the time because I didn't have the power but I felt so much love. I remember one day when my aunt came, she left food. And as I closed the door just to say goodbye, I just sat down and I started crying because I was very grateful for the love and the support that they gave me because that eventually gave me strength. Because every day I would know that there's someone who's looking after me, who's ca caring for me. And to be honest, I don't think if I didn't have that, I'll be standing here today. Uh, as a person who went through COVID and fought through the battle and won. To want to understand uh, the feeling uh, between the testing period and the waiting period of the results. I think for me, it, it just kept like, you know, crossing my mind that um, I, tested, I tested for COVID-19 and I was expecting results. But I think when I got the antibiotics, I think that kind of just my, I think mental, my mental, uh, my, my mind just prepared to get healing because the, my doctor told me that he had had COVID-19. Um, and when he put me on, on those antibiotics, it, it, there were just three. I, I think just, I, I think my mind just, accepted that I was going to get healed through these antibiotics. And so the first day I drank them immediately, like uh, when I came, when I woke up, I kind of felt like a shift in a, kind of a better way. Then I think the next day I was getting better, the third day I was good, I was getting good. So, but then coming back to the waiting for the results, I think kind of getting stronger medication put me at, at rest and then, um, but I, I would just remember I have results that I'm waiting for. And then when then eventually they came, I called. That's when I kind of got, got a shock. And then I was like, I, I, it was a splash of oh, actually getting emotional and teary. But then remember, look, I'm getting better. And then immediately I snapped out of that, uh, out of self-sympathy. And I continued. And I think one of the things is that I, I had a lot of support around me. Um, but I didn't tell my mom. Oh, you know, even my sisters, I didn't, every, I didn't want people worrying about me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Nyari. Um, basically, when someone feels sick with uh, a disease that is, is something to do with conduct, uh, like STIs, HIV, etc., etc., and uh, COVID being uh, included, uh, we try to find fingers either way back or forth where we might have got it. <laughs> did you by any chance try to do conduct I, testing? I think what you just did just makes it very interesting how people then begin to stigmatize. You just actually put COVID in the group of HIV, you know, uh, sexually transmitted diseases and that's very funny and weird. <laughs> and I, I kind of understand how then people feel weird about the whole thing. Um, to be honest, one of the key things that came to mind was, where did I get it? Um, like I said, I got it when there was, you know, no lockdown. So it was difficult to even begin to think, did I get it at the work assignments that I went on? Did I get it from a supermarket? Did I get it from a restaurant? Did I get it from a colleague, from a person that stays here? It just becomes difficult to contact trace. I, I had not, maybe if it was like the days when it had just happened, you kind of like possibly think, you always have that gray area, like one person that you, um, or one area that you think, but it's never really true. Um, I mentioned earlier on about struggling with, um, you know, waiters and waitresses. You don't know where you got it. Maybe it wasn't even the restaurant. Maybe it was a bathroom that I walked into and I, I properly didn't wash hands or when I thought I washed my hands, it's just difficult to know. 
Yeah, it's it's general uh, uh, really accepted within our culture in our society of context that fight catching or like say something like death or something that is trivial yeah. uh, or far reaching at time or way. Yeah. The point. yeah. But did you ever even try to even blame yourself of uh, either being complacent, being uh, reckless, except except uh, to the extent that you now you are now uh, COVID positive? I think there were a few. I think to Changotanga, um, there might have been times when I felt woody. Um, and how did I get this? Yeah, maybe it's was I complacent? Why did I not wash my hands properly? Maybe I didn't wear my mask properly. But then you you don't know if you got it from food. Like I'm saying. You know, we eat food in the restaurants, maybe if if I don't know, if you it did come, but then like I say that you don't know where you got it, so you cannot entirely blame yourself. But the thought came, um, yeah, because I I've always been also a, a champion sort of uh, of let's mask up, let's wash our hands, let's sanitize, and then the next moment you're the one with it. You're like, so how did I get it? But knowing and understanding that. Um, and realizing that that um, I cannot control it 100%, but I can do my best. Maybe if, maybe I'm here because um, it's the precautions that I've also taken and the measures that I've also taken. So I I think I, I you know I managed to shrug it off, and I don't ever feel like I am to blame um, or I was reckless. I and I, I it it crossed my mind, but it didn't stick. Anyway, just uh, I just have forgot you, Danyari, is we are going to come back and deal more uh, on the stigma aspect as we are taking a short break. Welcome back, and we get straight to Nyari. Uh, yeah, you were talking about um, the stigma associated uh, with, 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 with being COVID positive. But before we go deep into the stigma, I want to ask about the death instinct. That moment you felt sick uh, and you were a doctor and you're waiting for the results. And also going through the researches of the phases from infection, uh, the viral uh, maturity within your immune system. Did it ever come in your mind that death, death instinct, the fear of death? So maybe I will be counted amongst the, 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 the death death toll uh, in Zimbabwe. Um, I, I think yeah, I think I mentioned that in one of the interviews I had with Tatham, um, that yes, for sure, um, you know, having COVID, you are shaken. Um, COVID is taking our allergies, our friends, people that we know, um, people that we work with. And so for me, it was like, yeah, I felt like I was facing death in the face. And um, th that moment that I may come out of this or I may not come out of this is very real. But I think I also kind of focus on, I am very prayerful. Um, so I kind I can know that God was going to preserve my life. And I was also eating healthy, I don't want to lie. I was taking precautious measures like, like a lot of people who have suffered uh, COVID-19, you can't eat. The only thing that was eatable was fruits. And fruits are also good for the immune system. So I, during the time I ate a lot of, I drank a lot of green tea and I ate a lot of fruit. Um, so um, yeah, I was not very afraid of death, but I just knew anything could go south. Um, but I was praying and I kind of knew that I was surviving. Um, and to be in all honest, they rate mine as moderate. They they aggressive. The aggressive is when you get really sick. I don't think I've gotten there, but I could get there anytime had I not sought medical treatment um, in the moment. So yeah, I I yeah, death is you you like no and you are faced with it, but you don't send her or zero. And I was not really afraid. I was thinking about other things and I had, like I mentioned, support system around me. So, yeah. 
because the third body it is supposed to be embryo. Yes. And I just pray that in that period, uh, the precautionary measures were being taken at a maximum uh, level. Um, and uh, just to also uh, uh, take you back a bit, you mentioned that you did not tell your mom, okay. only your friends. Maybe you would talk to your wife because you understand the family system plays a greater important yeah. uh, role, especially in nursing. nursing. Yeah. So, I, I, I guess, I don't know, I do not want to worry my mom. Um, I knew she would be very worried. And you know, I feel like that probably could have taken a lot of my energy. Because when your family is worried, you also begin to worry. For me, I just, I think I also kind of like was too exhausted to tell my family. Um, especially because I also have, like my mom stays Komosha. And she's, she's old, and she's getting elderly. And um, I did not want to worry her or to raise an alarm. And if I told my mom, the whole family was going to know. And I, I, I just, one of the things that I invite, that I interviewed one of the survivors of coronavirus was um, talking is also very exhausting when you have coronavirus. So then you're going to have calls left, right, and center asking you how are you what can we do so people can't come you know my siblings a lot of them can't come and then so you know it's going to be phone calls wire wire and i'm like you know i'd rather be this and i was going to call them when i go to a place of seriousness so like i had like a lot of close friends that i talk to every day that are working with me that is not going to be big news that is alarming that is worrisome um so I, I guess it depends on your own support system but yeah i called my mom when i now knew uh, i think when i was getting healed today do you know that i had covid i'm double let's imagine <laughs> And then the whole family got to know. But also the thing is, I had my niece. I really had a very neat, synchronized, um, slim support system around me. That was just very practical for me. Others telling me, go and get tested now. Go get medication. How are you? Others just, you know, it was good. So I, I was good. And also my, my, my colleagues from work who, who knew I was sick. Also, I didn't tell folks from work. I just, like... Yeah, I didn't know. I yeah. was surprised when you did. I was listening on radio. I didn't want anybody worrying. I didn't want anybody worrying. But I knew I what I did was for the folks that I interacted with, the people that I was working like my colleagues from work, are the ones that I told and I told them you need to go get tested because we interacted closely together. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Um, I think the isolation. The fact that you spend most of your time inside the house, you can't go out. And I'm a very social person. I like talking to people. Uh, not on the phone, just face to face talking to people. And the fact that I would spend the entire day well, in the house, that really got to me psychologically. And that is a battle that I had to fight with. And it was fortunate enough that I'd have at least two people that would come per day to bring me food and to talk to. So that was okay. But at night when I was alone and I would feel the chest going hot, I would start losing power. It was really hard for me to cope, but I thank God that emotionally it didn't break me. I think it made me stronger, I hope. One thing that if anyone knows about me is that I, I've always said that I want to be a husband, I want to be a father. I haven't done that already, so I was afraid that that is something that would never happen. And I think surviving this has given me a lease in life and this is my prayer right now that I will become the best husband, the best father when the time comes for me to do that. And the second thing that I, I learned through that is that you should always be appreciative of the good that happens to you. When something good happens to you, thank. And after you thank, pass it forward to the next person. Because 
there's so much love that we can give in this world and we should not just stop. To be very honest, I, I count my blessings every day. Uh, one of my aunts would drive uh, 30Ks from my house to come. My other uncle, about 35, to come to my house. And I'm very fortunate that I have a family like that who can afford and who are willing to do that. And it is my advice to to any person that is living or that knows a person who's struggling with, with COVID-19, help in whatever way you can. It doesn't mean that you have to provide them with the $60 if not a test or COVID. Just the hello, how are you, how are you feeling? It goes a long way in helping a person to survive. So, uh, if I hear you very well, uh, there's a time when you mentioned that when you went to, uh, to, to the doctor, uh, you said, treat me like a COVID patient. Yes. Uh, you have kind of like accepted uh, the reality before the confirmation. Uh, is it because of the courage that, that was in you or it was because of the fear that was in you which made you to accept um, whatever the result might be? I think it was the ambassador in me for COVID that I always was, even before I got COVID, because I would, God forbid, if I brought COVID to my doctor. In that moment, he actually told me that he was also a survivor. So I, it is my it was my responsibility, and I think I like that you also mentioned HIV. And when COVID started, I always equated it to HIV, to say how we don't want to wear masks or how we want to shake hands uh, is how people interacted with finding a girlfriend or finding a boyfriend. When people, you know, you know, met together and you know they had sex, they never protected themselves because oh he looks good, oh she looks good, ah she's healthy. But you don't know what they're carrying. So for me, it is important for for everyone to know that they may be healthy, I may be looking healthy. And I shared the other time that when I get into a supermarket and people want to cram each other and they don't want to give you space room that one meter or two meters and people don't want to wear their mask properly. When you're telling them, look, wear your mask or give us, let's give each other room. People look at you funny. They're like, you know, you, you sound like you are too precious. And then I'm, I, I, I tell them, look, I'm a survivor of COVID. I don't want you to get it. And then people sniff and they jump. And I'm like, yeah, that's what you should do all the time. You mustn't have to wait for me to tell you I'm a survivor. You or I just yield of COVID or you must always treat the next person as though they could have it. Um, so for me, arriving at my doctor telling him it was important because I was deteriorating every day because I was feeling sick and it's my responsibility to protect him because he has to protect himself and a lot of other people that he's seen and a lot and also his family. Um, so it was important for me to declare that to say I feel like I've, I've COVID. Uh, so please treat me as such. Be precautious. Um, and of course, medication, whatever you got for me. Thank you, and I like the way you spoke in the last uh, a, a, a minute. Uh, it's really emphasizing on the ambassador in you. And at that moment, um, it's a rather <laughs> unfortunate that uh, we are run out of time. But to our dear viewers, this is a very, very critical issue. And we are set to come back with another episode going deep and understanding how Nyari recovered and till dead. It's bye bye for now. But there's one question that still uh, boggles me because every time I tell the person that I was COVID positive, they ask me one thing, where do you think you got it from? Yeah. I work in a hospital. I work at Pagrinato Hospital. Uh, it's easy to assume that I got it from there. But we're social beings. And COVID, unfortunately, is a social disease. You can get it anywhere from your mother, your brother, your cousin, your co-workers. And I guess at the end of the day, this will stand as advice. Let us be very cautious. And social distancing is hard, but we can do it. I thank God every day that I can share this story with people. But one thing that I need to appreciate is that one life lost from COVID is one too many. 
And since what, that one life is one too many, let's do whatever we can to take care of ourselves. Unfortunately, I noticed before I got COVID, I used to say this, I was joking around with people, telling them that COVID is only apparent to you when it happens to a person that you know. And unfortunately, eventually it happened to me. And if you can protect yourself, of which I'm sure all of us can protect ourselves one way or the other, let's protect. If you get COVID, isolate. Try to, because at the end of the day, we don't want to spread this pandemic as far as it has spread already.